In this age of new normal, online is not your only option. Because new normal means new learning modalities and new learning possibilities. Let Dibal make learning offline possible with Smart Class. Smart Class contains pre-made daily modules sequenced according to DepEd's budgeted teaching and learning calendar. Each module has a specific lesson duration and has day markers to guide parents and teachers in the asynchronous learning of learners. Inside the modules available in Smart Class, you will find the following elements. First, learning competencies are identified in the module openers. Kickstarters are available to test students' prior knowledge on the subject matter. This set of activities, found at the beginning of each lesson, may also serve as motivational activities. Parents of preschool to grade 2 students will also find notes to parents which contain tips and pointers on how they can guide their child while learning at home. Redefine your students' learning experience with the integration of augmented reality technology into images and illustrations available in Smart Class, making learning more interactive and exciting. At the end of each module, Long Quiz is also available to assess students' understanding of the lesson. Smart Class also features Wrap Up, a lesson ender activity that applies the constructivism theory of learning. In Wrap Up, students are expected to summarize the lesson on their own using a graphic organizer. You may also evaluate the quality of your students' learning by letting them practice their learning in real life through GRASP's formatted performance tasks. The content of Smart Class is designed for the entire academic year, and it is available for five major subjects. All aligned with DepEd's K-12 curriculum and covers the most essential learning competencies prescribed by DepEd. Secure your own copy of Smart Class before classes open. Contact marketingandibagroup.com to know more. Good day, Kabibal, and welcome to our Learning Intervention Webinar Series. For the discussion this afternoon, our topic will be Intervention Activities for Listening Difficulties. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. You may visit certificate.bivalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions in the comment box allotted during the session and they will be addressed by a speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnAsOnePH is our official hashtag for our Vival webinars. Experience learning, Kabival. And now to proceed with our webinar this morning, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker this afternoon. Mr. Lilo T. Carion Jr. finished his bachelor's degree in English with Latin honors from the Philippine Normal University and recently completed his academic requirements for Master of Arts in English Language Education at De La Salle University. He worked for six years in a private school as an English teacher and debate coach before becoming a faculty member of Makati High School, where he, has award, he was awarded most outstanding teacher in 2019. He's a national trainer in English and resource speaker in various topics, including reading, language, and literature. He is also a teacher broadcaster in English for Dep at TV. He extends his passion for teaching and mentoring other teachers as a content creator of his own YouTube channel, The Creative Professor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Diego T. Carion, Jr. Good afternoon to everyone watching us live right now on Vibal TV here on YouTube. And it is both uh, exciting and perplexing that right now we are doing everything, almost everything online. We buy everything online from food to gadgets to study tables to beds 
and even that cute desktop charge chargeable desktop des uh, chargeable desk plan that we put on our study tables right don't ask about because those are the things i actually bought online and not only that you see we communicate more and more online through google meet through zoom or facebook messenger and of course, what we're doing right now, we as teachers, we do our teacher trainings online, and that is why the word webinar was born. Now, in spite of the challenges that we have to carry on our own shoulders because of the pandemic, the good thing is that we still find ways to make things happen. And that is why um, in today's webinar, our gratitude goes to the Viva group because this is uh, their innovation and because of their hard work, we, they are able to trailblaze this entire endeavor. And it is actually um, such an honor for me to be invited to be a part of this webinar series on uh, intervention activities for the different learning difficulties. I hope that you, could be, you will be able to glean something from the things that we will talk about today. And I hope that what you will learn today could change your perception and probably um, even improve your teaching practices when we start our classes come October 5. And also in the next hour, we will talk about the listening difficulties, their effects on learning, and what we can do as teachers to help our students who experience learning difficulties. So just like what Ms. Michelle mentioned a while ago in my introduction, I am an English teacher for 13 years. Hence, most of the principles that I am going to talk about today are anchored in language. Does that mean that my talk today is only for English teachers? Definitely not, okay? Why? Because language is fundamental to learning. And in fact, knowledge is passed through language. Therefore, any difficulty in language also ripples into the learning of other content areas. And I worked hard to try to make my presentation as useful, not only to English, but also to science, to math, to Araling Pandipunan, PLE, ESP, Filipino, and MAPE. So since today our focus will be on intervention activities for learning difficulties, allow me to share my screen already. All right, so as I have said, the title or the focus of our discussion today would be Intervention Activities for Listening Difficulties. And again, my name is Mr. Lilio T. Carion Jr., your resource speaker for this afternoon, and I'm a proud faculty member of Makati High School. I would like to start uh, this afternoon session with a simple true or false activity. Okay, and I would like for you to um, reflect on the statements that I will show you and decide whether you think the statement is true or false. Now, you don't have to comment your answers anymore. I just would like for you to think about it, reflect on it. And then um, later, when we, when we uh, look at the answers to the statements that I will give you, I would like for you to consider um, why did you answer true or why did you answer false in the statements that I will give you. All right, let's start. The first statement is, Listening takes up 40 to 50% of the total time spent on communicating. Do you agree that it is actually listening and not speaking that take up most or like half of the part of the time that we spend on communicating? So think about that. All right, next statement. Listening is the most frequently used language scale in the classroom, listening is the most frequently used language skill in the classroom. Could this be true, do you think? Isn't it actually speaking that we mostly use in the classroom or probably reading, maybe writing? Okay, think about it. And finally, the third one is students from kindergarten through high school we're expected to listen 65 to 90% of the time. So from kindergarten, since you are what, around four or five years old until you reach 16, 17 years old, uh, do you agree that students are expected to listen most of the time around 65 to 90%? Okay, 
So they have your answers already. Have you thought about these three statements, whether they are true or false? Okay. But before I give you the answers, before I talk about the answers, let me first tell you the questions that we want to answer uh, in our webinar this afternoon, okay? So by show you, showing you this, I would like for us to have a direction. Uh, I would like to show you what I am going to discuss while you listen to me for one hour and a half. And I hope you don't leave us because uh, we're going to learn a lot today. All right. So here are the questions that I would like for us to answer this afternoon. Okay, first one is, what is listening? Second, what is listening comprehension? Third, what is the typical classroom listening activity like? Or maybe you can probe a question, something like, um, do you do listening activities in your classroom? If you are, uh, say, a MAPE teacher or a math teacher, do you do listening activities? Is it uh, solely done in language classes? Okay, number four, what causes listening difficulties? So if we all agree that listening is a part of, a of, of, of the classroom activities, then it's important that we know about what difficulties our learners may be experiencing when they listen, okay? And number five, how can teachers help students with listening difficulties? So again, if our students experience difficulties as teachers, it is our responsibility to try to remedy that. So what can we do as teachers? Do we just leave it to the kids to learn on their own? Or do we just uh, ignore it? After all, listening is just one activity that we don't always do. So these are the questions that we are going to answer in a bit. Okay, as we go along in our discussion. Now, let's go back to the uh, sentences or statements that I showed you earlier, and let's discuss each of them. Okay. The first statement was, listening takes a 40 to 50% of the total time spent on communicating. Actually, the answer to that is based on research by Gilak Jani and Amadi in 2011. And it tells us that based on their findings, it is true that listening takes a 40 to 50% of the total time spent on communicating. The second statement, Listening is the most frequently used language skill in the classroom. Okay, what was the answer here a while ago? Did you say, yes, it's true, or did you say, I don't think so? However, based on the research of Ferris Murphy and Vogley in different times in 1998 and 1991, they were able to find that it is actually listening that's most frequently used in the classroom. So in short, students spend most of their time listening rather than speaking or rather than even reading or writing or doing other activities. So let's see the third one. Students from kindergarten through high school were expected to listen 65 to 90 percent of the time. So the researcher whose last name is Gilbert did a study in 1988 and he found out that this is actually true that since kindergarten and up to high school, students mostly are expected to listen. So if we say that they are expected to listen, then it means that Gilbert has observed that most of the time activities given to students in, um, involve that they will listen and not much uh, as compared to reading or writing and uh, speaking. So they are mostly asked to listen. Now, what do these research findings tell us about listening? It tells us that listening is an indispensable part of the teaching and learning process and is a crucial part of learning. Okay, so these three researches, these three statements that I showed you from different researches, they are proof that indeed listening is very important in the classroom and that it is crucial for us to be able to say that a student has learned. Okay, now I would like to put that in the context. I would like to put uh, listening in the context of communication. That's why in your uh, screen right now, I'm showing you the model of communication. So this is a very simple um, basic model of communication. And I would like for us to uh, talk about it and let's put into context where listening is in this communication model. 
All right. So you see here that there are two uh, people um, in the communication process. The first one is the sender, and the second one is the receiver. Uh, the sender is the one who is creating the message, which is what we call the encoding process. Okay, so it's the sender that puts together the words, string them together to make meaningful utterances, okay, or phrases and sentences to be able to uh, form a message that will be sent to the other person who is the receiver. Now, as the receiver, the person has to be able to decode the message, all right? But let me go there in a bit. Let's talk about the, the items in the middle. So the sender is going to encode the message. Once the message is already formed, um, the sender is going to deliver that message through what we call a channel. Now, the channel could be a face-to-face -face conversation. So, for example, if you're talking with a friend or you're talking to your family or in this pandemic, you probably mostly talk to your husbands and wives, okay, or to, to your mother or father or to your children. So, one, one kind of channel will be face-to-face -face, uh, communication. Now, um, because of the pandemic, the, the, the more probably, the more commonly used channel right now is uh, through online, right? So we make use of Google Meet, we make use of um, Zoom, we make use of Facebook Messenger, of telephones, okay, for us to be able to communicate with people. So that is another example of a channel that we use. Okay, so the sender creates a message by encoding and then delivers that message or sends that message through a channel, okay? Now, the receiver will be the one to decode that. So after receiving the message, the, um, the, the work of the receiver is to be able to interpret the message. So if I am the receiver, I will have to be able to decode um, what the words that you said mean, and not only the isolated words, but when those words are put together, what is the message that you're trying to say? Okay, and I have to consider also the, the intonation of your voice, uh, the context of what you are saying, all right? All these things have to be considered for me to be able to decode what you are talking about or what you want me to understand about the message that you sent. Now, um, if I were able to understand, or at least I was able to get uh, the message from you, I will give my feedback, all right? So the feedback is now my turn to give you my message in response to the first message that you sent me, okay? So you see, communication is a cyclical uh, process, okay? It comes, uh, the sender and the receiver, their interchange roles as the communication process uh, goes on. However, sometimes the communication process may be interrupted with what we call noise, all right? Noise is a general term in this specific communication model to talk about everything that impedes or interrupts communication. It could be um, electronic, uh, at, uh, electronic noise. For example, if my internet connection is not very good. If I have poor internet connection, I would sound choppy to you, and therefore you will not be able to decode my message because you only uh, hear parts of my utterances, right? And uh, for example, another one, if you are trying to converse with your wife or with your husband and your children keep on bothering you, keep on, uh, I don't know, asking things from you, then that's example of noise as well. Now, uh, another one would be if I am doing um, this webinar right now, which is all about listening, but for you, listening is not very important and you just wanted to sit here so that, um, because you don't have anything to do right now. So you just wanted to sit, let's uh, maybe you just said, I'll just try to watch this video because anyway, I don't have anything to do. But you're not really um, concerned about listening or as a teacher, you feel that listening is not important. That's another example of noise internally, right? Because Yes, you are getting the message or you are receiving the message, but you don't necessarily understand it because of a lot of barriers inside of you, such as lack of interest in the topic. All right. So this is a very simple model of communication. Now, since we're talking about listening, we'll be focusing more on the role of the receiver. 
Okay, so we are going to look into what happens in the receiver during the communication process. What difficulties does the receiver encounter or experience um, in trying to decode a message? All right, so we are going to focus on that aspect because we are going to look into uh, listening difficulties. Okay. Now, I would like, I'm going to show, I'm showing you this picture because um, maybe around seven months ago, this is our concept of communication in the classroom, right? So most of the time, it is a teacher who is in front, we are in front, and our students are in front of us, okay? We are in front of the class and the students are in front of us, and we are serving as the what? The sender in the communication, okay? because we are giving lectures, because we are giving instructions, we are giving announcements, okay? And our students are the ones who are receiving it and therefore are doing the listening, okay, in the process. However, seven months after that situation, this is now the kind of communication that we will do in the classroom. Okay, so what I'm showing you right now is a stock photo of a Zoom uh, meeting okay in which you see that people are listening via the channel of um zoom okay so it's not a face-to-face -face communication anymore but it is computer mediated so that's why uh it's an, an example of that would be zoom now you see these two are very different and therefore um, we have to consider also how the listening difficulties that people experience or our learners experience, how are we going to remedy that given that we are in the new normal situation? And not only that, we have to also um, be aware of what possible um, listening difficulties our learners would experience when we start doing synchronous session with them through Zoom or Google Meet, okay? So those platforms, so we have to be able to identify all of that. Okay. <laughs> now, since we're talking about listening and in the process of communication in the classroom, <clears throat> excuse me, I think the, the next thing that we have to, uh, to talk about would be what listening is according to the experts. So we have, we may have different perceptions or definitions of listening, but let's take a look at what the experts say. <clears throat> All right. So, what is listening? Of the total time spent on communicating, listening takes up 40 to 50%. Speaking takes up uh, 25 to 30%. And then reading 11 to 16%. And writing about 9%. Don't you think this is an interesting research finding by Gilakjani and Amadi in 2011? This is the same thing as I the one I showed you a while ago. But um, I gave you the complete statement wherein where you find the breakdown of uh, the time spent on communicating across the four communication scales, all right? So speaking, listening, writing, and reading. Okay, as an English teacher um, or as a teacher like most of you, you probably would uh, perceive or would think that um, communication in the classroom is mostly spent um by reading okay or that it takes most of the time in um in the communication process and that speaking probably would go next however this research finding by uh, gilak jani and amadi tells us that it's actually listening that takes up uh, half of the of the communication time spent in classroom okay another one Listening is the primary means by which incoming ideas and information are taken in. So Divine 1982 emphasizes to us that listening is very, very important because it is the primary means in which we are able to um, receive ideas and information and accommodate them into our own system of um, knowledge and understanding and beliefs. Okay, So therefore, if we have in, if we encounter difficulties in listening, that is also going to affect the kinds of ideas or the amount of ideas and inform or information that we are able to uh, to take in as learners. Next, listening is central to the lives of students throughout all levels of educational development. I think the operative word here is central. 
to the lives of students or the word central, okay? It's not just a side track. It's not a sidekick to speaking. Rather, listening is the, the main character or uh, the, the main protagonist in, in, the, in the lives of students as they go through uh, the ladder or in, in their educational career. Okay, so as a teacher, it's important to be able to understand this so that we would know how to develop listening skills among our students, how to capitalize on using it so that our students can learn, and of course, how to uh, come up with intervention and remediation so that we can make sure that our students get the most out of their educational careers through listening. Okay, so I'm showing you right now a picture of uh, uh, what would be a common scenario because of the new normal or the pandemic. This is how listening is, go is going to look like right now. So uh, you have your picture of a student with headphones, right, listening via Zoom or probably a Google meeting. Okay, and this is now how listening is going to look like in the new normal. After all the definitions of listening that I have mentioned to you, all the concepts of listening that I have discussed so far, I'm sure that you, you are going to uh, be with me when I say that listening is fundamental to learning. Whether you are learning a language, which is English, which are English and Filipino, whether you are learning mathematics, whether you're learning concepts in science, or whether you're looking back in history with Araling Panlipunan, or you are reflecting on humanitarian concepts in ESP, or you are trying to look into the different civilizations and cultures of the world in MAPE, listening is going to be always fundamental to learning. Let's look at other definitions of listening. Listening is also the ability to identify and understand what others are saying this by Tomlinson in 1984. So in this definition, Tomlinson is telling us two things, that when you listen, you should be able to identify information given to you. So when you say identify, you have to be able to decode the sound and decode the word and then identify and then put that in the overall context of what is being said to you so that you could to understand what others are saying. Okay. Also, listening helps us to understand the world around us and is one of the necessary elements in creating successful communication. Of course, we already know that um, listening is a crucial or a vital element in the communication process, but let us also uh, remember that listening um, can help us understand the world around us because uh, we are always coming from the idea that reading okay, takes us to places, that reading takes us to worlds unknown, that when you open a book, you are going to uh, experience vicarious uh, experiences that your characters are, exper are, are going through. Okay? That when you open a book, you're going to learn about um, another world of knowledge that you probably didn't know before you opened that book. But no one says that when you listen to a podcast, you're going to learn a whole new world. Or no one says that when you listen to an audio recording, you will have vicarious experiences. Okay, what does this tell us? That tells us, um, that already tells us um, the hierarchy, if you may, between the communication uh, skills is that most of the time we regard reading more highly than listening, that we give more emphasis to reading more than listening, and that um, we uh, practice reading more in our classrooms than listening. We, and that is a fact. Later on, I'm going to show you research on that. Okay. Now, the Victor in 2000 proposed a model for the steps of sta or stages of the listening process. So. As you can see in the, in the diagram I'm showing you right now, according to him, listening has five steps, which are the following. Okay, the first one is receiving the message. So receiving the message basically entails um, hearing and attending. So it means you are able to receive the, the sound waves or the, the vocal stimulus that was sent to you um, in the communication process. 
Second one is understanding the message. This is where comprehension happens, all right? This is the part or the stage of the listening process in which you are all already um, decoding the words, the sounds, and putting them into context and trying to identify what exactly is the overall message being sent to you. Number three, evaluating the message would be um, actively criticizing what is being said to you, such as identifying whether it is true or false, whether it is truth or um, uh, whether it is fact or opinion, or whether uh, you're, you're evaluating or judging the value of, of the statement. So that is evaluating the message. Responding to the message would be after you have evaluated it, so you have heard it, and then you understood it, then you evaluated it, then you respond. So meaning you are able to uh, form your own um, idea or opinion, okay, or an answer to the communication prompt or stimulus given to you. And finally, retaining the message would be remembering what was said to you so that you can go back to it if you need it. So some theories uh, or some models of the listening process would put retaining the message in the middle because they said that they argue that um, before you are able to evaluate the message, you have to retain what was said to you first, okay, so that you could um, accurately, more accurately uh, give it an evaluation. But we, I am going to follow this listening process, which was uh, proposed by DeVito in 2000 in our discussion. Now, among the five steps in the listening process um, cited by DeVito, the difficulty in, the, in listening or the, the breakdown in the communication process because of listening difficulty happens here in the first two steps, okay? Receiving the message and understanding the message. And if there is already a barrier in listening in steps one and two, then the listener will not be able to reach three, four, and five, those, those uh, three other steps in the listening process. So therefore, since we're going to focus on these first two steps or stages in the listening process, let us give a simple definition to them. Okay. So the first one is receiving stage, which is uh, the stage involves hearing or the physiological process of registering sound waves as they hit the eardrum. So basically it's hearing, all right? It's receiving the sound that was said to you okay? because it is listening. And then the second one that it involves is attending, which is the process of accurately uh, identifying particular sounds as words. So when you hear the sound, uh, it's, you are still in the receiving stage after you have identified that the sounds make sense because they are, a, uh, they are words that you remember or you're able to make out words in the sounds that were said to you, okay? So that's still receiving stage. Now you move into the second one, the second stage, which is understanding. And this is the stage of listening during which the listener determines the context and meanings of the words that are heard. Okay, it's not enough that you heard and then you identified the words in isolation, okay? Because you can only say that you understood the message if you are able to put those words together, okay? And identify the relationship of these words together and then uh, look into what context is the message coming from, and finally, identifying the overall message of these words in this context. Okay? That is what we call the understanding stage in the communication or in the stages of listening process. Now, in the discussion of the listening difficulties, as I have said a while ago, ultimately, the concern would be failure um, in communication. And in understanding the message that causes the breakdown in communication because of a myriad of factors that we will discuss in a bit. Now, in the classroom, this translates to distraction, poor comprehension, low scores, demotivation, and many others. So it means that if our students are experiencing listening difficulty in receiving stage or understanding stage, that is going to affect their understanding of what you are um, 
what you are talking about in your lesson or whatever instruction or message you're given them. And not only that, in the long run, that's going to have an impact on their performance in your class, such as your, their, your, their scores. And also that's going to affect how motivated they are in your class as a whole, okay? Since we're talking about the impact of um, listening difficulty or if students are experiencing listening difficulty to their own learning, it's important for us to also understand what listening comprehension is. So let's take a look at that. Listening comprehension is not only a concern of the language teachers, so English and Filipino is not only our concern. It is actually a concern of all teachers. As long as you are a teacher who gives this to us, lectures, dictation, film viewing, podcast listening, among others, listening comprehension is your so here about listening comprehension, do not think anymore that, ah, that's only for English or that's also from, uh, that's only for Filipino. No, if you are a teacher who is giving listening activities or viewing and listening activities, then listening comprehension is your comprehension is. Okay, first, according to Roth, 2002 and Hamuda in 2013, Listening comprehension is an interactive process in which listeners are involved in instructing. Okay, let's take a look at this definition of listening comprehension. It is a process, an interactive process in which you as a listener is trying to construct meaning from what you said. Okay, so remember the receiving stage, you received the sound waves or you heard the message in those sounds. And after that, you're in your state, and then you come up with your constructed meaning. You are not going to construct an accurate meaning out of the message that was sent to you. Go problem. Also, listening comprehension uh, is when listeners are uh, when listeners comprehend or knowledge, yes, intonation, and other linguistic or non linguistic clues. So, you see, listening comprehension is a complex process that a listener uh, will have to, uh, to do for him to be able to say that he understood the message. So it's a lot of work, okay, for you to be able to understand uh, the, a message or um, an utterance that you heard. Because for you to be able to go to the stage of understanding or comprehending that message, there are other things you have to do, such as discriminate the sounds, okay? Of course, we don't like literally think about these things. It happens automatically, right? But these are the things that happens when we are listening. We uh, to discriminate sound, then we apply our knowledge. Uh, we look into the grammatical rules, such as you ask yourself, is this a question? Is it a declarative sentence? So a statement lang ba to? Or nagtatanong siya? Okay, yung intonation niya ay galit ba siya? Um, malungkot ba siya? Okay, yung stress ng word. Ano ba yung pinaka-importanting word dun sa sinabi niya na gusto niyang uh, matandaan ko? Okay, so these are the things that are going through our minds when we are listening. We will listen. Again, it's not literally that we think about it. It happens automatically. But it's important for us to know this because somewhere here, if one of these things or some of these things are jeopardized, communication or listening will have a breakdown. Okay, next. Also, listening comprehension is one's ability to comprehend spoken language at the discourse level, including conversation, stories, and informational or text. That involves the process of extracting and constructing meaning. All right. So first thing, uh, listening comprehension is your ability to comprehend or understand a spoken language or something that you heard. 
Okay? And it doesn't have to be in the word level. Hindi pwede ang kaya mo lang intindihin sa isang sentence na sinabi ng teacher mo ay yung magkakahiwalay na salita. Because it's not going to be a, a complete message. All right? It's not even um, enough that you understand one clause or one part of the sentence and not the other because it's not going to be an accurate message. What, how can you say that you have comprehended it correctly? It has to be in a discourse level, meaning you should be able to understand it in the entire context of the whole conversation, in the entire context of stories that you are listening to. And in the entire context of an informational or a lecture text that you are listening to. For example, I'm doing a webinar right now on listening difficulties. If you came here to this webinar just one minute ago, you, are, you might find it difficult to get the, the entire context of what I'm saying. Or you might not have a full grasp of where this webinar will go because you are not able to catch um, some of the things that I said earlier, okay? So since you can compare what we're doing right now in, as a conversation, okay? It's like um, I am conversing to you, although you are not replying, of course, because we are doing it via YouTube, okay? So we are doing a conversation um, of a certain topic, which is intervention activities on list, uh, for listening uh, difficulties. If you are not able to catch the beginning of our conversation, you are going to have a difficulty understanding the rest of it. Unless you ask someone what, what was said earlier, like, anong sinabi ni sir kanina na hindi ko na, na intindihan or hindi ko na gets, etc. Okay. Now, after looking at what listening is and what listening comprehension is, I came up with this idea that listening is a vital part of acquiring knowledge and should be given a lot of attention both in the teaching and learning process and in research. I hope that you would agree with me when I say this, because given all the evidence I have shown a while ago, which mostly are research-based, listening is really a very crucial part of acquiring learning. And if you have difficulties or if your learners experience difficulties in listening, then acquiring knowledge would also be difficult to them. And since listening is very important in learning, then we should give a lot of attention to it in our teaching and learning process and also in research. Okay, but let's do what millennials or the Generation Z would call real talk. Okay, so let's do a real talk. So um, in preparation for this, for this webinar on listening difficulties, I did a mini survey, okay? I did a mini survey with my colleagues in Makati High School, and I would like to thank those teachers who responded to the mini survey that I did because they are very helpful to this research. Now, since the mini survey is just um, implemented in one school, of course, we are not going to say that it is conclusive, okay? We're not going to say that um, it is something that we can generalize from. But what I would like to uh, point out with, with this real talk and with this mini survey is that we have studied a lot of theories already in the past few minutes, okay? We have studied a lot of theories already. I wanted to go down to the grassroots. I wanted to know what exactly are teachers doing um, in their listening activities in their classes. Um, I was able to gather information from different subject areas. I, I had one from, I had several teachers who answered the survey. Some are from, uh, from the science department, uh, from English department, from PLE, from Araling Pandipunan, from MAPE. All right. And as I told you a while ago, all teachers do listening activities. So again, it's not only for the language teachers. Okay. Let's do real talk. I asked them three questions, but I will only present to you uh, the two questions, which I think are very vital to our conversation today. What are those two questions? First question I asked them, what listening or viewing activities do you usually do in your classroom? So what listening or viewing activities do you usually do in your classrooms? And I was able to summarize all the responses into this. Okay, listening to audio recordings, which could be conversations, discussions, news, speeches, lectures, and stories, many others. 
All right. So you probably also do this in your class. Maybe sometimes you like put your laptop on loudspeaker and then you ask your learners to uh, listen to a discussion, maybe to a debate, maybe to listen to a news report, okay? Maybe listen to Steve Jobs' speech from TED Talk. Okay, you probably did that. And then, of course, you give lectures, maybe um, sometimes to put variation in what you do. Instead, you play an audio recording of a lecture that you are doing for that day, okay? Maybe instead of telling the story, um, you find a material which is a recorded telling of a story. I did this once when I discussed uh, Beowulf, all right, because I'm teaching grade nine. So I, in my discussion of Beowulf, I, I took uh, an excerpt of it because, of course, it's a very long poem. So I just took uh, an excerpt of it, the most, uh, uh, the most exciting part, which is the battle with Grendel, all right? and I recorded it myself so that instead of me reading it to the class, because they probably won't, okay? They will not because it's, uh, it's, they probably will not find it interesting. So what I did was um, I gave them the text and I played my recording of it. So that's one thing that you can do. And prob uh, according to my survey, this is something that teachers do. Of course, everyone probably has done um, film showing in class. Sometimes you do it by department. Sometimes you do it as an entire school. Okay, and sometimes after we do the, the film showing, we ask our students to do a movie review. Okay, they probably come together, right? They're married to each other. Viewing of documentary videos and films, especially true for Araling Panlipunan. Um, MAPE also maybe if you want to tackle the lives of the world famous um, artists, okay, or musicians or composers. And then watching TED or YouTube videos related to the lesson, of course, everyone has probably done this. Um, you discuss grammar, so instead you play a lecture of that from YouTube. Um, you wanted to teach about how to write an informative speech. So what you did is you play a TED video about it, or a TED talk uh, that shows that. And for example, you wanted to discuss about martial law maybe, so you play uh, a video from YouTube that you think is going to supplement your discussion. Listening to podcasts, of course, um, I wouldn't say this is very common because number one podcast is not very popular in the Philippines, okay? But there, there are teachers who, who do this in our school. And listening to reports of classmates. So sometimes we ask our learners to master and topic and uh, discuss about it in class. So the others who are not discussing, they are basically listening to their classmates report. Okay, so these are only some of the listening activities that the teachers that I surveyed said that they do in class. Probably you can relate to them. I'm sure there are some here that you have done or that you continue to do even after all these years. Now, is there anything wrong about um, doing these listening activities in class? The answer to that is there's nothing wrong, no. Okay, so there's nothing wrong about doing these activities. I have done some of it, okay, myself, and I will probably continue to do them um, if I have a chance, let's say after the pandemic or even maybe during our synchronous sessions with my class. Okay, so there's nothing wrong about them. However, what I would like to focus on is the second question that I asked them. What problems do you encounter with students during a listening or viewing activity? So I think this is the more uh, interesting part because as teachers, we know our pedagogy, we know our strategies, we know our techniques, okay? But the more important question to ask is, what is the effect of our strategies? What, how do our students respond to our um, activities? Do they enjoy it? Do they learn from it? If they don't, why? Where, where does the problem lie? Is it us? Is it the strategy itself? Um, is it the learners who are to be blamed for it? Let's see. Okay, so we have here a, a vector of a learner who looks bored okay, in a listening activity. 
the question is what problems do you encounter with your students when you are doing a listening activity with them or a viewing activity with them because you see when you ask your students to watch a video they have a visual it's called viewing but of course they are listening also so um that's what we that's what i'm trying to point out with the listening viewing activity okay so what are the problems teachers encounter when they give a listening activity to their student the number one answer that uh, i was able to is lack of interest. Okay? According to the teachers I surveyed, most of the time when they do listening activities, their learners show a lack of interest. Could it be lack of interest in the activity? Could it be because the topic is not um, interesting to them? Okay? Or could it be because of the, the techniques that we do in class. Maybe our instructions are not enough, okay? Next one is lack of comprehension. So probably we play a video or we ask them to listen to, a, uh, to an oral text, but they do not comprehend the message. They cannot understand it, okay? So that is one other response. So the next one is they can't understand some words. As a teacher, I find it interesting why, our, why my students would not be able to understand some words. I want to find out the root problem of that so that I would know what to do. Um, the next time I give a listening activity, I will have to address that first. Next one, they can understand fast speech. Okay? So if I'm talking too fast right now, maybe some of you would say, okay? and this is something that our students probably encounter in a daily basis. Hindi lang sa pagpiplay natin ng video, hindi lang sa pagpiplay ng audio, baka po sa pagkasalita natin. When we dictate, our speech is too fast. I'm guilty with that because as you can tell, I, I speak fast because if I don't, my thoughts would be lost. Okay. And finally, incorrect understanding of information. This can happen that um, the learner is able to receive the message, heard it, and then they're able to um, uh, construct meaning to that message that they heard. But also they are able to have uh, like an understanding, a sort of understanding of that message. But the question is, is the understanding correct, right? Like I, I, I read one response from the survey that I, I did. Um, one teacher said that, so my students are going to listen to the story. They're able to get some parts of it correctly. But when you ask them to tell the story, they are going to have a different version of it. Okay, so there is, um, there is construction of meaning there. They are able to decode parts of the communication given to them or the, the message given to them, but it's not accurate. So that is incorrect understanding of information okay. so therefore i think the next question we have to ask ourselves is why do we have learners who experience listening difficulties why is it that our learners lack interest why is it that they comprehend it incorrectly why can't they catch up with the fast delivery of the speech why is it that um they are not able to understand the words, okay? Because these are all examples of listening difficulties. And as teachers, it is our responsibility to know why there is communication or learning breakdown because of difficulty. Okay. Let's take a look. Listening and speaking skills are not important parts of many course books or curricula, and teachers do not seem to pay attention to these skills while designing their lessons. Again, real talk. This is coming from research. Okay, so one researcher found out by surveying uh, books, curricula, that listening is not given much attention in books, in curriculum, and maybe we teachers ourselves when we write our lesson plans, we don't necessarily consciously think of including listening to it. Think about it. Do we sometimes just put listening there as a motivation? When I say motivation, like, nilagay niyo yung video, 
para lang maaliw yung mga bata, para sumigla sila sa umpisa. That's not necessarily uh, a listening um a listening activity intended for learning, right? Or do we just play the video so that we can rest? Kasi lima po yung klase namin, sir, nakakapagod talaga. So, sir, pwede ba yung sa dulo, video na lang lahat sila, panoorin ko lang sila ng Wonder Woman or Avengers. That happens, real talk, right? Um, do we consciously think about this last breath? A listening activity course curriculum according to milks do we even have listening in milks okay so i would like to align it this according to research most to, uh, most teachers take it for granted and believe that it will develop naturally within the process of language learning again I, let me say that again most teachers take it for granted and believe that it will develop naturally within the process of language learning. The question we asked a while ago, why is it that our students experience learning difficulties? It is because, uh, listening difficulties, it is because of these reasons. Because sometimes as teachers, we take it for granted. Um, either we do it, but not develop it. Okay, like for example, na pinakinig lang natin sila to test them. Okay, not necessarily para matuto silang makinig. And sometimes probably you also believe na, ay, matututunan naman nila yan. Like, hindi ko na kailangan ito sa kanila yung paano makinig or hindi ko na kailangan sanayin sila sa pakikinig. Okay? Because natural naman yan silang matututo niyan. Okay? Also, um, we tend to think that listening is a skill that, uh, sorry, uh, we think that uh, According to research, listening is a skill that tends to be neglected because we tend to think that it is automatically acquired by the learner. Okay? And also, there is... I cannot see this part. It's a misconception that students can deal with listening difficulties on their own. It is encounter listening according to the students are able to deal it on their own deal with it on their own and finally teaching students higher level cognitive and metacognitive strategies and self-monitoring strategies will solve writing okay or ng speaking Kasi ang pananaw natin, or nagkuturo tayo ng mas mataas, mga higher level order thinking skills. Because we tend to think, our notion is that um, the listening problems will take care of itself. However, according to research, that's not the case. So maybe the time was to open our ears, to open our ears to the fact that listening should also receive a lot of attention to us teachers or from us teachers. Okay. So let's dig deeper into the problem okay? by looking into what actually causes listening difficulties. As, um, as teachers, we have to be able to address them so that we can make sure that our learners will not experience them and will have um, all our subjects, whatever subject we'll be teaching. So let's discuss what causes listening difficulties. I'm going to listen that which are one speaker or one the number two or the message then okay later I'm going to tell you uh, what we mean channel here. Okay, let's talk about the first one, which is the speaker. Okay, there are several factors in the speaker that causes uh, listening difficulty. So the first one is in terms of the speech rate. Okay. <clears throat> a text spoken at normal speed or even at a slow speed is usually perceived as being very fast by low proficiency level students. So right now, even right now, now, to me, I feel comfortable with my speed. 
some of you would feel that I'm too fast. Okay, and this the, the same is true for our students, especially if our students are have low proficiency level. Kahit na sa kaklase nila normal lang naman yung bilis ng pagkasalita dun sa recording or ni teacher, para sa kanila parang ang bilis. Okay, this is according to research. Because the learning proficiency level of the student affects his or her perception of speech. Okay, so this means that we have to get to know all our students. And make necessary adjustments with them. Maybe um, when we give a lecture, we have to try. Maybe choose material or your videos. In the same speaker, because the speech rate is actually a source of uh, listening. Okay, next one. Still on speech rate. They often can stand much of what they hear, not because the content is difficult or the language is too hard, but because the speakers speak too fast. So, ibig sabihin, hindi lang pala laging, ang hirap kasi yung sinasabi, parang sobrang highfalutin, sobrang komplikado ng topic, hindi pala laging ganon. At hindi lang la dahil English yung ginagamit. that causes listening difficulty and therefore affects learning. Okay. Next one, any increase is in a decrease in comprehension. The scale, bumibilis yung ating speed rate or yung speed ng pagkasalita natin, maba apprehension. How to go about that? If you want to increase comprehension, then dapat mas mabagal yung pagkasalita. Okay? One important knowledge that you should remember as teachers. So, hindi tayo kukuha ng YouTube videos na sobrang bilis magsalita ng ating uh, nung speaker because it's a incomprehension. Okay, there's this interesting excerpt from the uh, research of in which they interviewed the respondents, is this is what, and this is what one of the respondents said about speech rate. The speed is too fast for me. I cannot catch, catch up. Look at the word catch. I cannot catch up with the speed. I only catch a few words. So parang ganun yung panahon ng mga bata. They're listening. They're trying to catch the words that we say. I'm really busy trying to catch the words and do not have much time left to think about other things. So because of it, the fast rate of your speech, kapag nag-discuss tayo, kapag tayo ay nag-lecture, uh, nag or nag-play tayo ng recording, YouTube video, or whatever that is, kapag sobrang bilis, our students will be very busy trying to get all the words here, trying to um, identify all the words that they hear him anymore to think about what is the meaning of this word? What does the meaning of this word have to do with the other word? And what's the other message of this? So it's a very basic thing to do. Okay, so speech rate is very important consideration when choosing materials and when giving listening activity. Phonetic variation. Okay, this sounds very linguistic, but do not be uh, intimidated by, by it because it is something that our students um, should be able to identify or should be able to master so that they want difficulty. Phonetic variation uh, is when words or phrases sound blurry. Um, phonetic variation is applied to them, such as assimilation and elision. So these are very link two linguistic terms, but let me uh, indulge with me a little bit. I will discuss with you what elision is and how they could possibly um, become a difficulty in name. Okay, assimilation is a general term phonetics for the process by which a speech sound becomes similar or identical to a neighboring sound. Words that we say, some of them got um, 
they start to sound similar or identical do sa mga katabi nilang sound. And because of that, kapag ang isudyante ay hindi ganoon kabihasa na makinig sa English, for example, then they might misinterpret some of the words and affect com- their comprehension. Just like the, uh, the sentence, nice to meet you, okay? Sometimes meet and you, the sounds mix so that we say meet you, meet you. But you don't just you don't necessarily say to meet you, right? Sometimes say nice to meet you. The T and the Y become uh, stimulated together, so meet you, okay? Would you like tea, all right? You don't. You would you like some tea? Uh, we say you. Would you like some tea? So the sound, the sound, uh, the sound of word gets mixed or simulated in the would you would. You, all right. If there is not very familiar about segmenting sounds, okay, or um, the boundary, it causes a listen difficult. Would all right, still on static variation is elision. All right, elision is the omission of sounds in speech. This is done to make the language easier, sister. That one listening is oral speech. Okay, so na pinapahanga natin from the sounds. Um, to make uh, the words easier to say or easier to say faster. No, sometimes it's Okay. You just do it some or some sounds in the word so that you can say the the phrase faster. I don't know. What if the student doesn't understand? Do know like do know do know thou sir ano daw po? Okay. And camera. Some would say camera. Camera. Can you hand open? Right? So it's really, um, it could actually be a source of a listening difficulty. I remember uh, just recently there is one TikTok video that became viral in which there is a late correct pronunciations in English. So, sabi niya doon, like the word comfortable. Who's comfortable? It says that. That's comfortable. You don't say comfortable. However, that is one only one thing that happens. It's called elision. In the word comfortable, it's applied by the variation elision. But the universe of English, such as in Philippine English, which is legitimate, it is accepted to say comfortable. All right? So it's not incorrect. So I just mentioned that because I remember it's one example of elision. Okay. In speech, words, to, uh, words tend to blend with the surrounding word, thus making it difficult to clearly perceive the boundary between words. Problem with listening. So, from Fernandia and Farrell, 2010. One response is, I have great difficulty in recognizing the words in the sentences. I always try to catch the words when I listen, but it's so hard for me. Phonetic variation. Hindi niya ma-recognize yung mga boundaries. words of that listening thing okay this is what the blending of words look like okay according to this researcher spoken language spoken Seems like a it's gonna be so a related listening difficulty with the speaker is accent. Okay, accent. Take a look at that. Accent is a manner of pronunciation distinct to a particular individual location or nation. Okay, kahit po pareho kayong Tagalog nagasalita, pwede magkaiba yung paraan ninyo ng pagbikas ng salita. Ganun din sa English, kahit um, the way the Americans speak a word would be different, maybe different from the way Australians would say it or the British would say it, how a Singaporean 
anosaic and varieties of accent. Okay? Nagbigay ka ng video sa students mo kasi um, ang lesson mo say ay ano ba? For example, you want to talk about one significant event in human history. Kumuha ka ng video na documentary sa, sa YouTube. Okay? And then this video um, is actually produced or created by let's say British, by the British. So Nila is from Americans and our students, Filipino students, are more familiar with the American accent because that's what uh, that's what we teach them. Although again, nagbago na yung American accent sa atin because we now have what we call a Philippine English, but that's the origin of our situation. So students may enter a lot of difficulty listening to your oral text or to your to the video you gave them if the accent is um is impeding their understanding or they cannot understand the accent. And it's a very real problem. I myself, as a teacher, an English teacher, I sometimes find it hard to listen to British accent or Australian accent, okay? Even sa US, kahit na American English ang gamit nila, when you go to different states, magkakaiba rin ng mga tunog. Okay, and this is we watch sometimes na American naman ang gumawa, Hollywood, pero sobrang hirap intindihin because of the accent of the uh, which is distinct to a certain location or a certain state I speak one of more that a listener comprehension so take note of that accent is affecting listener comprehension so when, when you choose materials for listening activity, kahit science pa yan, or mathematics, simbawa nagdi-discuss sa math ng um, uh, operations, okay, or concepts in mathematics, it's important that we as teachers check the video, listen to it, and then um, try to put ourselves in the level of the students if our students could be able to understand that. Okay. Another excerpt from the same research I showed you a while ago. Many words sounded familiar to me, but I just couldn't think of their meanings immediately. But here, in the learning and the learning process, yung accent. So, familiar yung bata dun sa word, pero kasi parang iba yung pronunciation niya because of the accent. And because of that, he um, because his business in trying to identify the word which is sounding differently because of the accent. Parang sobrang busy niya na to get to the meaning of the word. Okay, and that's going to pose a problem in learning, uh, in listening, and therefore in learning also. Oh, sabi niya rito, when I try to recall their meanings, I always miss the sentences that came after. So again, barrier siya. If, if uh, uh, the accent of the, of the speaker is difficult for us to listen to and understand and identify the words, it's not going to work. All right, let's go to the second one, which is text. All right, the second factor that causes difficulty in listening. When I say text here, I mean the message or what we listen to or um, the, the script that is being said in the, uh, in the listening activity, whether script calls your speaker or uh, whether, uh, whether it is your, your discussion, lecture in class, or you script or you speech on these are all the text. It's about the message that's being sent. Okay, one factor um, with regard to text that could pose a listening difficulty is complexity of the text, which involves okay, if the text is above the listener's level of comprehension. Ibig sabihin, Yung level ng inyong listener is at, he, at this level and then the text you gave them is much higher or is higher than that, okay? Which might um, have unfamiliar vocabulary, vocabulary that are very technical that of course they don't know. Difficult grammatical structure. So if hindi nila level yung grammatical structure non, of course that's already a barrier for them to be able to listen to it properly. Length of the text is another one. Most complex texts are long, okay? So you have 
to choose um, appropriate the length of text that your listeners or your children or your um, learners understand. Also, um, the, the fourth one is amount of concepts and information to process. Bakit yung oral text na pinapakita mga bata na mag-information overload na sila? That's already um, a barrier to learning which springs from the difficulty of listening to it. Okay? So, this research, uh, when we are looking for listening text that we want to give our students, it's much better if we give the easy ones or the easier ones. Okay? It doesn't have to be difficult to understand. It doesn't have to be complex in construction. Something e just within their level, there's even one research, research that says a level lower than their own, okay? Because that's how they're going to learn much better. All right. Second one is context. Okay, so we're talking about the message that they're saying or the, um, the message that's being played in the video or recording that you are uh, giving your students. Context would be background knowledge. Baka naman yung that we give them, they don't have enough understanding of the background knowledge of that, okay? Or they are unfamiliar with the topic or culturally, hindi nila alam yung topic na yun. Um, I remember that some, some trainers would always point out, why would you give uh, a text to your students about snow when, we do, when culturally or, well, uh, climate natin, we don't have snow, Right? So that's already a barrier to them. The context of the listening text you're giving to them can be a barrier. Naman culturally different, pero they don't have enough background knowledge about that. Okay? Or they're not familiar with the topic of what you're giving them. That's already going to cause a listening difficulty. Okay. Task is also, but could also be a listening difficulty. Tasks also affect how students understand a listening text. Okay, what are the different factors when it comes to the task that could cause a difficulty in listening? Okay, first, kung yung task natin ay immediate response versus delayed recall, ano ibig sabihin? Meron tayong listening task na nakikinig yung mga bata at ang pinapagawa natin habang sila ay nakikinig ay something that they are going to be able to answer immediately while they are listening. Okay? For example, ang gusto mo lang ay uh, bilugan ninyo yung words, yung keywords that are uh, that would appear in the text as you listen. Or, i-check ninyo yung mga pictures that you think are uh, related to immediate response because right away gagawin nila pagkapakinig nila. The other one, delayed recall, ito yung mas mahira. Ibig sabihin, they have to the listening, they have to finish the lecture, the discussion, the video, at after noon, i-recall nila yung mga information. Tahat sa kanila sa sagutan. According to research, um, what is the better activity to do to avoid listening difficulty? It's immediate response. Let your students do something while they are listening. Okay? Kasi listening in it might find it boring. Baka makatulog sila. But with a task at hand while listening, they would feel a sense of accomplishment in, in it it's in itself because they will be able to confirm right away if their answers are correct while they are listening. At mas mag, it's, um, it has um, lesser opportunities for them to encounter listening difficulties. All right, so immediate response is a much better activity. Although it's not all the time naman that you would do it, of course, in mga times that you want to do delayed recall, medyo mas high level, okay? But let's start with the, with the also, uh, with regard to task, amount of information to be processed. So, baka naman yung task na binigay natin would require our students a lot of information. And already a burden to them to listen, to decode, call, okay, uh, they are listening to. And kung binigay pa natin is that's not what na gagawin while they are listening, that's going to, to add to their burden. 
Okay, so let's be cautious about that and let's be uh, let's think about those things when we prepare activities available to finish the task. And I will add to this the, to this the amount of time of listening to the to the text that you give them. Because in the mini survey that I did, my teachers who said that um, the students are not able to understand kasi sobrang haba ng video hindi na natapos. It can happen. One hour lang po tayo sa klase, baka yung video mo 45 minutes. So wala na wala ka na tapos wala ka ng good morning, wala ka ng at and so that routine, diba? So you have to think about that. Okay? And provision of visual support, very important. I would suggest uh, that if you're going to do a listening activity, you give a support or a supplementary to that. Pwede, while they are listening, you have a copy of the text that they are reading, which is the text of the listening, uh, of the listening text, okay? The printed text of the listening or oral text. In that way, as they listen, they'll be able to confirm and follow through as they read, okay? Ano pang example sa visual support? Sometimes when you show a video, then while the while the uh, the, the listener or the, sorry the speaker is saying something, may mga words na lalabas sa video or may mga pictures na lalabas sa video. That is what you call visual support, and based on research, that is going to make your task easier and could avoid uh, listening difficulty. So let's do that, di ba? Bakal naman sobrang haba ng task natin. Nakinig lang sila lahat. It's much better if they have something to read while while they are listening or yung pipili nating videos, they have visual support so that the students can confirm their understanding of what they are listening to. All right. Going to the third factor, it's the listener. Okay, the listener or the learners themselves. How can a listening difficulty come from the learner? Let's see. Emotional and physical issues. Di ba sabi ko sa inyo kanina, kung hindi to ko, hindi kayo listening, that is going to be a listening difficulty. Then, kapag meron silang pinagdadaanan, that's what we call it, di ba, sa mga sudyante. Kapag meron silang pinagdadaanan, be uh, a barrier to their listening comprehension or um, um, low level of comprehension for them. Okay, let's see what are emotional and physical issues that our students could experience. First, nervousness and lack of confidence. We are in the new normal, okay? And our students, kung tayo, tayo hirap na hirap tayo kung paano gagawin tong new normal. We do a lot of webinars. Like every day tayo nag-webinar, pero when we nag-simulate tayo, hirap pa rin tayo, di ba? What more of our students, di ba? This is going to be first time for them as well. I have worked with school. Nakita niyo how this is react. For us in the public school, we are. I, I'm sure that one factor is because they don't know. Um, they didn't have enough practice about how to do this. Hindi nila probably alam kung paano ba maginteract kapag tile yung screen mo nandyan lahat ng kaklase mo at yung teacher mo nandyan. 40 people na nakikita mo sa screen, how do you behave? Um, pareho ba yung behavior ko dapat? Like, how do you do it? Nervousness. Okay? When you give them a ring of tea or when you do your lecture, synchronous nervousness na, ay, baka hindi ko mar... Pag ano, yung connection ko. Ano pag nag-choppy? Hindi ko naman pwede sabihin kay sir. Sir, paulit naman, di ba? One factor there, hindi mo kasi paulit yung speaker. That is one characteristic of listening. Hindi mo namang pwedeng sabihin, ah sir, dan, pakiin, pause nga ha, o di kaya uh, sabihin mo ay uh, ulitin mo. Unlike with reading, pwede mong balikan, di ba? Unless recorded yan, video or audio recording, pwede mong i-rewind. Pero if it's live, for example, nag-lecture yung teacher, nakaka-nervous yun kung makukuha mo ba yung lahat ng sinasabi ng teachers mo. E paano kung may, may na-miss ka importante lumabas sa quiz, right? Lack of confidence. What if the student is not very familiar with Zoom, with Google Classroom, and all the other apps that we give them for them to use? That issue as well. Anxiety and frustration. All right. So we are not unaware na a lot of
I'm sure probably some of us also experience that. All some of the people viewing this video right now, you have probably experienced uh, episodes of anxiety and frustration because of the pandemic. Are our learners um, immune to that? No, of course they also experience that. Okay, we, they also experience that. When we do an oral session with them, in which of course they are going to listen, those anxieties and frustrations that they and experience outside of our online class, that could be a difficulty in learning or in listening for them. Nakikinig sa lecture, kaya nasa isip nila ay, sa ba itong pandemic? Will I be able to see my friends again? Is my, is the classroom going to be like this forever? Like in the next few months or years? Meron bang vaccine? Paano pag naubos yung pambili ko na internet connection? Maaabsinan ba ako? Right? These are things that could cause anxiety and frustration among our students. That could impede even their listening uh, abilities. Okay? Lack of interest and motivation. Kanina, I showed you in my mini survey or research na lumabas, number one, hindi interested yung mga bata dun sa mga pinapakinig natin sa kanila. So we have to do something about that. Motivation. Buong araw kang nagpakinig, alright? Or sa isang linggo, limang teachers nila ang nagpa-listening activity. Tapos, tatlo out of those five listening activities, ang baba ng score nila or hindi nila na-enjoy yung kanilang pakikinig. That's going to affect their motivation. Bakit magpakinig ka, audio or ka ng video, tapos sobrang labo na internet connection, Choppy. Tapos, bukas pa. Lalo nila hindi marinig. Ayaw na nila tuloy makinig at all. So, unfamiliarity with technology. So, sinabi ko na kanina, hindi nila alam gamitin yung Zoom, yung Google Meet. Okay? May mga ganong bata. Kahit sabihin natin na Gen Z sila, they are digital natives. Yes, not everyone. Hindi alam ang technology. Alright, so this is the listening competition. The next one is language competence. Okay, so naman na yung na-build natin skills sa mga bata throughout the time they, they, that they were in school. Language skills that they have. Okay. Topical knowledge. Marami ba sila alam na topics? Baka yung binigay natin uh, listening nila alam ko ano yan, yung topic na yan. So, it's a barrier to listening. Vocabulary knowledge. Ang dami unfamiliar vocabulary dun sa video. Hindi mo inanlock. So, that's going to be a listening barrier or difficulty for them. Cognitive demands made by the content of the text. So, ibig sabihin, alam natin that our learners have different cognitive abilities, right? May mga iba-iba silang levels of cognitive abilities. Now, if we give um, a listening text na medyo advanced, paano naman yung mga sa baba, yung mga those who have uh, lesser cognitive abilities? Diba? So that's going to pose a challenge for them. Kasi mahirap nang makinig, mabagal yung internet connection mo, tumitila off yung manok sa kapitbahay, naka-on yung mic nung lima mong kaklase, tapos ang hirap pa nung text. Okay, that's all springing from the fact that your learner... Um, has not doesn't have um, a high language competency to be in even more of a burden and insufficient listening skills practice. So grade nine yung student natin. Like ako grade nine yung student ko. Grade one to grade eight, wala na masadong practice ng listening. Like siguro ang teachers, for example, lang, uh, nagpapakinig lang once a month or twice a month. Yung talagang listening activity. So the rest, hindi naman ganun, okay? Hindi naman ganun like a full-blown na listening activity or a what out So our students do not have uh, list, uh, enough listening skills practice. Nagka-pandemic, naging Zoom yung klase mo, naging Google Meet, tas puro listening. Of course, it's going to pose a challenge, a listening difficulty. Lack of practice. Okay? Lack of practice. Ganun hindi ka sa... Kapag nagbasa ka, mahirap, mahirap for you. Ganun din sa listening. Kung wala kayo enough practice, it's going 
to pose a listening difficulty for you. All right. And finally, the fourth factor of listen that causes listening difficulty is, of course, physical setting and channel. Okay. So, physical setting or physical environment, alam natin maraming distraction. Uh, putting it into context ng normal. Okay. Kung napalit ulit, internet connection natin, yung kapatid mo, yung inga, yung nanay mong inuutusan ka, okay? Yung kapitbahay mong may construction, these are physical environment um, na are going to affect the difficulty of your learners. So ito yung binigay mong video, yung internet connection mo ay mahina. So hindi lang kaya video video sa Google Meet. Or, naman yun mo at ng learners mo, pero yung gamit nilang sound system, like yung headset naman nila, ay hindi nag-work, or yung speaker ng laptop or ng cellphone, they're very poor. It's going to have a family difficulty. And of course, everyone experiences this internet connection. I think while you are listening to me, at several points, nag-shopee ako, or medyo, medyo may kaya na rin receive a notification that my internet connection is unstable and it happens okay internet connection is um an example of a difficult uh, of a factor that could cause this alam natin yan like nag google meet tayo choppy si teacher or choppy yung uh, yung kaklase mo na nagsasalita then definitely you will be able to understand the convention caused by the poor internet connection. All right. Because during the new normal, the internet is our channel, di ba? So, wala naman tayong face-to-face -face communication. Hindi mong pwedeng magtawagan tayo tapos doon tayo mag-lecture, right? So, really, it's the Google Meet and Zoom or I don't know if the others would use Facebook in their synchronous session. But right now, uh, generally, the internet is channel in delivering our instruction. So, now, uh, just internet connection is going to uh, cause um, uh, a barrier in communication, then it will also cause listening difficulties. Therefore, as teachers, we have to look at intervention strategies that could uh, remedy all listening difficulties that our learners are going to encounter. Because uh, that's our new normal. All right, I'm going to give it 12. Um, them brief, uh, with you briefly, and hopefully uh, you would be able to um, apply them in planning your lessons, okay? And hopefully after this, you will be more interested in giving um, listening activities and more conscious now about how you will think about your listening activities, okay? The first one is discussion of the purpose for listening is going to help our students to set their mind about what they need to do in the listening activities if they know kung bakit sila nakikinig. So at the beginning, tell your students, are, are we going to listen to get um, specific information? Are we going to listen? Because we will summarize this later. Are we going to listen? Kasi ikukwento natin yung um, story after. Okay, so discuss the purpose for listening. All right, next, activate prior knowledge. So we give them a text or we give a discussion about a certain topic. And if our students are not familiar with that, that's a barrier to their listening comprehension. So give them background knowledge or review what they already know about it. Okay, so that they won't be at a loss. Paano ating prior knowledge activation? Pwede mag-discuss muna tayo a little about it or we review a past lesson about it or we show them pictures for discussion, okay? So those are examples. Okay, next, three teaching keywords, unknown words or phrases, idioms, and technical terms. We don't want that our students will be listening to, it or will be listening to our lecture, and in the middle of it, they will catch words that they don't know and will therefore not be able to understand the, the intention of them. So we can pre-teach those keywords, define them. Okay, if they are idiomatic, give them what it means in the text that you are going to discuss. If there are technical terms or jargons, define it to them so that when they encounter it in your oral text, 
able to understand the message. Fourth is different kinds of input. So let's not limit ourselves to just YouTube videos. Pwede tayong magpakita ng lectures, pwede tayong gumawa ng audio recorder, phone voices, all right? For news, pwede speeches, all right? So there are many, many kinds of input for listening that you can use. And um, do not be uh, scared to try various types. Okay? Be adventurous in terms of that. Number five, setting up a listening goal. All right, this is different from the uh, number one kanina. So setting up a listening goal is that you give them a text to listen to, so pwedeng audio recording yan, pwede yang video, okay? And then you are going to tell them, all right, we're going to listen while you're listening to it the first time to uh, identify the topic, for example. That's one listening go. Second listening, you tell, I will play again, okay, or I will again. Uh, while you are listening to it the second time, I want for you to identify um, some of the important keywords in, in the text. Tapos, thirdly, your goal is to be able to like maybe create a simple outline of the most important parts of the listening text. That's a listening goal. Okay, if you do that, your learners will have a direction uh, in listening to you or to 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 your uh, video or audio recording, and that's going to help them understand what they're listening to. Next one, simultaneous reading and listening. So, medyo na discuss ko na to kanina. It's always better that there's a visual support while your listeners are listening or you read uh, while, while your students are listening. Uh, so, you can provide them with a text, the actual text of what they're listening to so that they could follow as they listen. Doing tasks while listening, okay? So, hindi naman kailangan na pag-play ay makikinig lang sila ng limang minuto ng walang ginagawa, okay? Pwede rin naman that you give them a diagram to complete or you give them um, a close activity while they are listening or you give them whatever task, okay? Uh, as long as they do it while listening. Next one is using visual aids. So this is related to uh, reading and listening to so provide them visual support. Using, vis using visual aids could mean you present pictures or you set, you present a motion video while they are listening. The principle here is that if they have other sources of information that could help them construct the meaning of what they're listening to, it's going to be a more effective listening experience. So use visual aids. Next one, slow rate of speech, all right? So, piliin natin yung mga videos or maybe modify natin yung setting ng video so that it can be um, slower than, than the actual. Kasi nga, um, the rate or the speed of speech is affecting comprehension. Diba? I told you a while ago, the faster the rate of speech, the lower the comprehension. So, you have to flip that. You give them a slower speech so there is increase in comprehension. Okay. Adapting and improving listening material. You can always adapt materials, but be, uh, be very cautious about adapting materials. Of course, you have to uh, scrutinize the materials, all right, and study them on your own. Improve listening materials. That's what uh, I told you a while ago. Um, when I did Beowulf, I recorded my own voice because my students would is uh, because my students are more familiar with the sound of English that I speak more than the sound of the find a reading of Baywall from YouTube, all right, or from the internet. Pero, since British yung nabasa nun, so that familiar, I tend to not be that familiar to my students. Unlike if I would do it myself and my accent is Philippine English, then uh, they will have a better sense of understanding what I am reading to them. In this case, what are listening to. Okay, next. Encouraging prediction. So halimbawa, you are... Uh, 
each teacher, you are showing a video to your students about events in history, you can pause somewhere there and encourage them to predict what they what they think might happen, given na hindi pa sila familiar doon sa topic na yun, di ba? So that is also going to aid them process uh, the information they have listened to. And syempre, when, they're, when their classmates give input, that's additional um, help for them to be able to understand and construct meaning. Next one is repeated listening, okay? Um, it's okay to do repeated listening, to clarify information, um, to set up different learning or listening goals, okay? And so this is something that we can do. All right, so I have shown you 12 examples of uh, intervention strategies for listening difficulties, and I would like to end with this simple uh, quotation from Adams in 1998. He said that listening is best learned through listening. This is coming from the idea that we will best be able to learn reading by reading more. So listen, uh, listening is best learned through listening. Anong ating insight dito kay Adams? Do not be afraid to give listening activities. In fact, be encouraged to give more listening activities because that's how our learners will learn to listen properly and more effectively. And be the kind of teacher who would know, who knows how to, um, who knows how to create listening activities that are based on research, that are well thought out, okay? And that be aware about the listening difficulties that your activity might pose to your students. So try to remedy or try to reduce those listening difficulties. So again, listening is best learned through listening. So whatever your subject is, Always try to give a listening activity because it's one way your students can learn. Now that you are aware of the difficulties and what you can do, then there is no reason for you to be afraid to give listening activities. That is all that I am going to offer to you today. Thank you all for listening. If you have questions, I will be able, I would like to entertain them. If we are not able to uh, answer all questions, you can find me on Facebook. It's Leo Carion. So just give me a private message. I will try my best to answer your questions. And please, please don't forget that I am also on YouTube. My YouTube channel is called The Creative Professor. Again, The Creative Professor. So please uh, subscribe to my channel because I am going to uh, give more videos that, in, that talk about English and online learning platforms and digital learning tools that you can use as a teacher in the new normal. So thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you so much, sir. Now we will proceed to the question and answer portion. All the right. first one is from Ms. G. Lim. How are we going to address these students if for them they prefer to learn the lessons through writing and reading? Okay. So you see, uh, in the course of our discussion, Ms. G, no? uh, in the course of our discussion, we are able to see already that listening is uh, a neglected language skill. In fact, we, uh, some researchers call it the Cinderella skill kasi lagi siyang aping-ape. Tapos ang stepsister niya is si reading and si, si writing or speaking. Okay, so how are we going to deal with that? I think one of the ways that we can do is to give them interesting listening activities. Okay? Di ba kanina sabi natin, the text, the listening text that we're going to give our students should be easy for them, okay? So therefore, if a listening activity is within the range of the learning level of our students, they're not going to be afraid of it. Plus, add to that, if they, are, if they could relate to the listening activity and if they, are, if they find the listening activity uh, interesting, then they would probably try to do it. And after all, as a teacher, you are the one who knows your student much better, right? So try to incorporate all these principles and tips that we discussed today to try to encourage your students to, um, to learn from listening by starting with listening texts that are relatable, that are within their head or their level, and that would be very interesting to them. 
Thank you so much, sir. Next question po is from Miss Jocelyn Prades. What listening activities can you suggest, especially to public schools, that will focus much on mod modular modality? Thank you. Okay, so Miss, uh, sorry, I, I forgot Jocelyn, Josephine. Miss Michelle, what's the name again? Jocelyn. Uh, Miss Jocelyn, Ma'am Jocelyn. All right, so um, we all, we are all very aware that there are different modalities right now in DepEd, and if uh, your students are doing the the modular approach uh, among the modalities, because di ba like meron online or blended, and then there's the modular approach. Remember that when they are given their self-learning modules, they're ang kasama nun, or it is coupled with the uh, TV and broadcast modality, which is, of course, a listening activity in itself. So what you can do is that um, to encourage your learners to listen and to view is kasi yung self-learning modules, it doesn't mean naman na sila na lang mag-aaral sa bahay, di ba? What you can do, kasi magko-communicate ka pa rin with your students, eh, even if they are in modular approach, what you can do is assign them uh, probably topics in the module that they have to answer or to read or to learn about by watching or listening to DepEd Teleradio or DepEd TV. All right? So, kasi supplementary, parang mag-asawa yung dalaway. They are paired together. So, I encourage your students to do that. DepEd has a schedule for the lesson, so make sure that your students are aware of the schedule and just mention to them that you need to do the modular uh, activities, the module activities by listening to DepEd Teleradio, which does not require internet connection, or DepEd TV. So I think that in itself, ma, you, you're, you will be able to give your students a learning, uh, a listening activity rather, even if they are in the modular approach. Okay, there we have it. So that's all the questions that we have for yeah. now, sir. So in behalf of Rebel Group Incorporated, I would like to thank you, sir, Leo, for being our speaker this afternoon, for giving us, giving us an insightful learning session. It is truly an honor to have you with us, sir. And to all our Rebel viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our learning, learning session. Muli maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, everyone.